I wanted to show you how we can spin up a Neo4j database container using Docker Compose. All right, so let's get to it straight away. So the first thing I want to do is to find Neo4j image on the, and I'm already on the Docker Hub. So this is hub.docker.com. You can Google it, or I can I'll add it in the description of this video, and. Um, so we're going to use the official image. You can probably it's going to be the first one we're going to pick. And here we have some description about it. All right. Yeah. So they're specifying where the volumes are and which ports to use. All right. And uh, I'm actually going to use Docker Compose for um, to spin up the container because later on I'm going to join it with Node.js application. Um, all right, so for now, let's look for the right image. I'm going to use the 4.4.3 community. Um, there are several reasons behind it, because I wanted to stick to specific version of Neo4j, because they bring different changes from version to version. So I don't want anything to crash in case of updates. And uh, we are using community because enterprise is obviously a paid option. Um, all right, so I'm going to create a directory called docker neo4j let's cd into this all right and let's open it up so the first thing we need to do is to add a docker compose file and as usually we start with the version which is 3.8 services and I'm going to use Neo4j and the image is going to be Neo4j and the tag which we can copy from here. Uh, then we should specify the ports. So Neo4j is running on via two protocols. The first one is HTTP. It has HTTPS as well and the Bolt, but we're going to use HTTP, well, open ports for HTTP and the Bolt. So for HTTP, the default port is 7474, but it's usually busy. So I'm going to use um, 7888. And for the Bolt protocol, the default port is 76. Eight seven, and I'm gonna run it on seven nine nine nine. All right, let's save it for the correct indentation. Next thing I'm gonna specify about restart options. So we want it to restart only. Uh, un we don't want to restart it unless it was stopped. Oh, yeah. it's not an array. It's just one argument. Uh, all right. And the next thing we're going to specify is the environment. And in the environment, we need to specify the authorization. So it's going to be Neo4j auth. And here we specify the username and slash password. So it's going to be Neo4j is going to be user and password will be password. All right, let's save it. And this is pretty much it uh, for now. Oh yeah, actually we need to add as well volumes because we would like to persist uh, our data. So the data itself will be stored in uh, data folder. So I'm going to create a uh, db folder and with the same name but we don't want to just create volumes for data i would like to create uh, volumes as well for config for logs and all the plugins which we're going to add all right so i'm just going to copy paste them if you are using mac you can do it using option shift and arrow down in case if you're wondering so we're going to add as well here config it stands for uh, the folder is conf and then we're going to add logs and the last one is plugins all right so 
yeah let's test it out and see if we got the everything is correct so let's run docker compose up so i probably have the image downloaded already all right we're getting some warnings for the first run all right that is fine So if you're wondering what are volumes, I have another video and I will add it into the cards and you can check it out. So these are host volumes or bind mount. So basically whichever changes we are making in this folder, they will be linked to our hosts volume, which is specified on the left and on the right is the uh, virtual uh, file system. So basically they're linked together, whichever changes we are making, they will be propagated to uh, another file system. All right, so as you can see, the database is working. Let's uh, just test it out. Uh, so I have a new 4 j desktop already open. Uh, let's create a new project. I'm just going to name it Docker. And here let's add a remote connection. So we specified the port 7999. I'm going to use it. So here. 799 here i'm gonna name it just new new 4 j test uh, let's click on the next so the user which we specified is new 4 j and the password is password all right and uh, yep it's uh, connecting automatically to it oh no it's not <laughs> so it's connected now and let's open it up and Yep, so we got the Neo4j browser and let's create uh, some node and test if the volumes are working. So I'm gonna create a node user. Uh, it will be user with the email address and it's gonna be something like this and let's return this user. All right, so as you can see, we created one node and uh, yeah let's close it up for now and let's disconnect and let's stop the container and we're gonna run docker compose down and let's start it once again all right so the container as we can see have started uh, all right let's connect once again sorry it's a bit repetitive but we need to test it and make sure let me just zoom it in uh, all right and let's open this up all right and here we can click and view all the notes and as you can see we have the same note with the email course at gmail.com all right so the volumes are on but the last thing i would like to add is uh, apoc uh, which stands for awesome procedures over cipher uh, which we're gonna definitely use uh, i will add a card as well which i give a bit more explanation what are those and uh, to enable them we need to add some configuration and plugins uh, since it's a remote connection we need to send them basically to our docker container so i have these files already uh, already created and I'm just going to move them here. So for the plugins, you can uh, search yourself for the APOC 4.4 version, which we're going to use, uh, which we can use with 4.4 uh, neo j community. And in the configuration, we need to add two files, APOC and neo j config. So neo j config is the configuration of neo j itself. So here, in case if you're wondering these are all default settings except the bottom ones uh, where i enable apoc functions and streams and uh, yeah i specify which functions uh which procedures i enable so it's import export and triggers and as well i specify some logging information uh, for example i would like to log all the queries which will take longer than 200 milliseconds which i'm going to use later on and to run the apoc uh, procedures we need to as well create a separate apoc file apoc.conf where we specify basically the same like in neo4j config for 
the APOC procedures. So these are the same, these ones and these ones. All right, so this is pretty much it. Let's uh, spin up the container once again and just test the APOC functions. I have already one uh, procedure saved, which I'm gonna run now. All right, so the container is on. And once again, let's connect. Actually, we don't need to disconnect all the time, but I'm just showing it to you in case if you will uh, keep the Docker, uh, sorry, Neo4j browser open, it will just reconnect automatically. So you don't need to close it all the time. I'm just making it very explicit. And um, yep, so this is a APOC function, APOC procedure. Uh, we use it to, to run it. We need to specify call then basically APOC and the procedure which we are using. Uh, and uh, what it does, it uh, creates a create date trigger, which will add a property create date on every node that we insert into database. And it will create basically a create date onto it. So this is another APOC function, which generates the date. Um, and it will be inserted it will be created before the insert into the database. So let's run it. And yep, as you can see, uh, it got created. Let, if you're wondering where we can check all the triggers, we can just run trigger list and it will specify all the available triggers. So obviously we have only one. And now let's uh, see if it works. Let's create another node. So I'm gonna write create. Uh, user, user, who is the email, uh, I don't know, jessica at gmail.com, and we will return user. All right, so Jessica got created, and uh, obviously here we didn't get anything, but if we will check all our nodes, as you can see, the first node which I create, the first node node I created, it has only two properties, but Jessica now has create date, so the triggers are on, and obviously APOC functions are working. So this is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and in the next one we're gonna start working already with Node.js application, specifically Nest.js application, and we're going to connect database, and yep, start running the queries. All right, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.